So we're here for uh, Calling on Film. We're back, and we got Joseph D'Onofrio with us tonight. It's been so long, and it's uh, it's great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, it's like uh, one of these days I got to have you on and everything. I saw you uh, uh, that one. Uh, well, I missed you. I went to Chiller last year, which is coming up, but I, I missed you. you. You had taken off, and I just got there a little late. Uh, and then uh, I saw you over the summer. Yep. So that was great. And now you're going to be in my hometown where I grew up uh, in Middletown. Uh, so I, I thought I saw that when you put that. I'm like, wow, in Middletown, New Jersey. That's where I grew up. That's where I'm from. <laughs> so I, I, was, I had to contact you and be like, oh, man, that's like down the street from where I work. And, and I grew up across the, the highway there. So uh, it's, it's, it's awesome that you're going to be there. Um, so comedy, huh? Yeah, it's going to be at the Middletown Sports Complex. It's going to be at five, uh, opening up at five thirty on October sixteenth. It's a Saturday night. It's a three course meal, mm. and you get to see five comics perform. That's a lot. That's a good show. Dollars for the food. It's like you get the comedy show for free. Yeah. So yeah, it's a three course meal. You don't usually get that at comedy shows either, do you? So that's pretty good. Well, I wanted to make it like a fun yeah. night, you know, yeah. something for people to go out, have a good time, enjoy themselves, have yeah. a nice dinner, have a couple of drinks, laugh, and just enjoy yourself. Because, you know, everybody's been inside the house because of the pandemic all these months or whatever, years now. So yeah. you know, let's get everybody out, give them a good meal, give them a good time, and have some fun. Yeah, everyone needs a laugh. I love going to comedy shows, so you know, and food. I love food too. So, you know, you put those two things together. And in my hometown, I don't have to travel anywhere really. That's you know, you usually have to drive so far to New York, get go to New York for comedy shows, or uh, we have the Stress Factory, which is kind of far. Uh, many years ago, there were rascals, but gone. Full headline comics. Yeah. Bob Yo. DeBono, Steve Marshall. Patty Roxborough and Drew Frazier and me, I'll be hosting the night. That's so you great. guys are going to be laughing all night, man. I'm just excited to even watch the show myself. <laughs> I love comedy and I'm just blessed that I get such good comics to come and do my show all the time. And the people at Middletown Sports Complex are awesome, man. And I was yeah. grateful that they asked me to do the show there. And they want to make it really good for everybody because, you know, they want everybody to come back because it's a yeah. great complex. I mean, you live right there. They yeah. always have hockey games and uh, Halloween events. They have a lot of good stuff over there. I thought it's great that they're doing comedy shows now. They, they should. They should do more. So it, it's a nice big place to, to have it. So I'm, I'm excited to go. So <laughs> And, uh, yeah, all these comics, there's so many of them. They, they've been doing them, doing this for such a long time. If you look at the list here, and I'll put this up here where people can go. Look at that. Doors open, 530. So, you know, you go down, relax, and eat and drink, right, beforehand? Yep, exactly. And then uh, then the comics come on. Everyone comes. You'll, you'll be starting at 730 yourself, going on there and starting the show? I go on 730, start the show, do a little stand-up. Then I bring my first comic up, and then I come up, and then I bring the second one up. Then yeah. we're going to have a little intermission, and then I'm going to come up, do a little more comedy, and then I'm going to bring my last, my, my other guy up, and then I'm going to have my closer, who is Steve Marshall. Mm -hmm. Steve Marshall is unbelievable. He interacts with the audience. You're going to have a good time with Steve Marshall, man. Everybody always does. It. Everybody else is really good. And, and I just, I'm excited. I love just hanging out and talking to people. It's, it's a good time. Yeah, I know. Years ago, I I remember seeing you stand doing stand up at uh, Dangerfield, way way back then. So uh, that was a while ago now, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the first show I ever did. Yeah, first show you ever did. Yeah, that I was. Remember, I remember I, you were there. I was there. Yeah, I was there. We, a, a few of us went, and then uh, that was that was a fun night. That was a real fun night. Yeah, but, that was uh, packed house that night, man. That was really good. I think I did like eight minutes that night. Yeah, you did a lot. It was oh. good. <laughs> I got the bug after that because yeah. an acting is to I mean totally two different things. Mm -hmm. up when you're interacting with the audience, it's great because you get to talk to people, you have a good time, you know, tell a couple of stories. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just a fun old time, man. And the food, like I said, I got a chef coming in. Oh. He's making great, great food. It's not like you're not gonna have like food that isn't good. You're gonna enjoy the food. I figured. I, I I know you know you know food, so that's great. <laughs> uh, I love food, man. Food yeah. 
Yeah, me too. Yeah, I love food. I love comedy. It, it sounds perfect. So uh, we'll, we'll get it out there, and I'm sure you're going to have a real packed house. Like you said, there, there's tickets are selling like crazy already, right? Oh, yeah, it's almost sold out. I mean, there's yeah. only a couple of tickets left. And like I said, it's only like a week and a half away. So yeah. anybody who sees this, if you want to have a good time and laugh and enjoy a good meal, come on down. And everybody's welcome from, you know, kids to adults. It's it's fan friend, It's friendly to kids and everybody. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That, that's awesome because, you know, a lot of comedy clubs, you have to be 21 to get in. And uh, it's it's great to have shows where you can have the family there and eat and enjoy too. So that, that's and and it's in a and it's a big family town in the area. So I grew up here. Um, it's actually close to where uh, where I work at High School North and the other side of town's High School South. It's a big town. <laughs> oh wow! It's a really big town here. It's a um, it, it's really huge. Uh, so, but can, it, it oh I can't wait to check it out. I've never really been to Middletown, so I'm excited to come out there and check it out and go around. Yeah, yeah, it's not too far from Asbury Park. You've been there. <laughs> oh, that, wow! Oh, wow! I didn't know it was. I didn't know it was close. That's cool. Yeah. Good yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, it's a, and you know Asbury Park's great, and you won a an award at, at Hang On to Your Shorts there out there a long time ago, and uh, and uh, you were winning awards like crazy for the, all the short films all over the place, right? Pasquale's Magic Veal. I might have another short film for the Bright Side oh. Film Festival, which I know you do, yeah. which is one of the best film festivals that I've ever been to. I was telling you that before. Yeah. You throw a great film festival, man. I can't wait to go to the next one. Like you said, though, like drinks and food and movies or comedy, either one, like it, it works. It really does. So, uh, but what you got the comedy bug, you did it for the first time. I know, I mean, you did so much acting for so many years a lot of dramas but i've seen you in comedy yeah. and, and you had that but uh what made you get up on stage and do it well what made me get up on stage was it actually happened because it was a, a guy i was hanging out with one night does stand up and he told me he goes yo you're a great actor but i don't think you could do stand up oh so i looked at him i was like you know i always wanted to do stand up but i never really gave it a try so he's like Oh, really? He goes, well, I'll give it a try. And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a try. Sure, let's let's do it. Let's set up a show. So he's like, okay, let's set up a show. And then I didn't see him for like a month. And basically I seen him and I was like, I thought we were doing a show. And he's like, oh, you were serious? <laughs> I was like, serious. I was like, I, I've been one of the stand up. So basically he made a phone call and we did the show. And then after I did the show, the owner of Dangerfields actually came up to me and he was like, Wow, he goes, you never that's your first time doing stand up? I was like, Yeah, it's my first time. Yeah. He goes, You were really good. You had a lot of good presence on the stage. And he goes, I would love if you do another show. Oh. And then after he said that, I got introduced to another guy who was doing shows all over the city. And that's how I started doing other shows. And I started honing my craft. And I really enjoyed it. But I remember the first time I was so nervous when I was downstairs waiting. Yeah. I got up on that stage, I was like <laughs> But I love doing comedy, too. I love doing comedy. I just finished this thing, Townhouse Confidential, where I played a mortgage broker, a funny guy, Sal Carmine. And we're doing Gravesend. Oh. As we speak, Gravesend is shooting in Brooklyn, New York. It's a series that's on Amazon Prime, and I play Johnny Mad Dog Mangano in that. That's kind of a rough character. I, I just uh, saw some pictures there. You got a little Capone look on you. Oh, yeah. I just played a, a ghost. The Ghost of Al Capone wow. in a movie called Don Q with uh, Amon Asante, Chuck Zito. This guy, Claudio, uh, is directing it and a lot, a lot of great characters in it also. Great movie. It, I mean, if you look at Al Capone and you look at me, they had a picture. So yeah. I, I, we look uh, like... <laughs> you do. I saw that when I was like, you, you actually look like him, really, too. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And but then you had the, the scar and everything? Well, they put the scars on me. Mm -hmm. Al Capone, yeah. I, I Googled Al Capone's voice. And oh. it's one tape. It's on YouTube. And he sounds like this. I came to this town with $40 in my pocket. Wow. I got a wife and a kid that I love very, very dearly. I really think that they should let you have what you, like he talked like that, like a foggy yeah. voice. Oh. I showed it to the director. And the director's like, I want you to say that in the scene. <laughs> Oh. So Amon Asante is having like a dream and we're in this dream. And I'm like, hey, Don, I came to this town with $40 in my pocket. 
what are you going to do about it? And then I'll, I'll, and then I'm on a Sante Reacts, and then it's a whole bunch of stuff. But it was great to, it's great when I could do somebody like a real, a real person. Real person, like, yeah. Like mannerisms and try to like do it like they did it. And it was fun. That voice is, you know, the voice was funny. When you get off here, if you want, yeah. Google it, you'll see. Absolutely, yeah. I got to hear the voice. <laughs> I saw the pictures, but I got to hear that voice. It's great. Yeah, so I what, what got you into, like, I mean, you acting forever. What got you into it? What was the first thing, like, way back when? I was a break dancer. Uh-huh. I started break dancing as a kid, and I did a lot of commercials as a kid. And then as I got older, my manager transitioned me into movies, like auditioning. So basically, I just started auditioning for them, and I started, you know, getting parts little by little. I mean, and that's how it really happened. And then, of course, you you got as a as a younger person, you got Goodfellas and an iconic role, an iconic movie, and then working with uh, De Niro for the first was that that was the first time you worked with De Niro then. The first movie I had a line in was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I worked ah, with yeah. Turtle and a, and Casey Jones. Yeah. And I worked on Goodfellas with Marty Scorsese and Robert De Niro and uh, Chris Cerrone and Paul Savino and yeah. a bunch of other guys who were in the scenes with us. And, you know, and then we went on to Jungle Fever with Spike Lee. Yeah. And then Robert De Niro directed me in the Bronx Tale. And then a couple of things here and there. Absolutely. So, yeah, you got so many iconic roles when you're younger. And then... Uh, yeah, you just keep on working. <laughs> Never ends, does it? Just yeah, one after keep, the other. Yeah, thank God I keep I keep mm-hmm. busy because you know I try to take it seriously, and you know when I come to the set I do my job and I get yeah. out of it. The Don Q movie we did, I had like I had a couple of scenes. Every scene we did, we did two takes. Boom, 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 oh, boom. And you get that, it done. That's you amazing. It done, and you know, and you're nice to everybody. You just yeah. do what you got to do. But I'm writing my own script right now. I'm writing oh. a horror comedy movie. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Tony. It's it's a Halloween. It's Halloween, Dexter, and Death Wish. All <laughs> made <in the> movie. <laughs> so I'm like halfway through it. And I, I never realized how hard it was to write a yeah. script. Because like, I always tell actors. They always ask me. So yeah. What do I do you know, to become an actor? So I always tell them, write your own script and make it. Mm-hmm. So then my friend one day comes up to me. He's like, have you ever wrote a script? And I'm like, no. <laughs> he's like, then why do you tell people to do it? And I'm like, you know something? You're right. So I went, I bought a final draft, and I started writing a movie. And I didn't realize it's very hard yeah. to fill up a page. And, you know, and you know, you want to have a story. You got to, you know, I had to write an outline of how, where I wanted to go and characters. And, you know, I'm learning a lot. I have a friend helping me out that's wrote a couple of scripts. So and I'm really excited about it because it's it's so much fun. It's about this guy Tony. He's you know he's like a pizza guy, but he's like the mayor of the city. Like everybody loves him. He's this great guy, but then he finds out he has a terminal illness, mm. and then he he he's, he he wants to just like take people out that are doing bad things, mm. like Death Wish. Like he starts yeah, like taking people wish. out, you know, and the cops are, don't don't know it's him, and then they're trying to find out, and then he has a girl, of course, that he's fallen in love with, and then he has a, a crazy mother, and then he has you know a couple other things going on, so you know it's it, it's great story to and to put it all together like beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it's great. It takes a lot of time. I'm excited. I know it's like you always want to rush through it and get it done, but you want it to make it good, so it takes you know a lot of concentration. Um, it's not easy. You're right. It's not easy. I I I would have been doing it more and more and more if it was easy. <laughs> but uh, you know, you, once you get that story down, and you just gotta do a little at a time and relax. Because uh, I know a lot of these writers, they rush it, and then you know it doesn't come out that good, or the the script isn't as great as they think it is, right? Yeah. Well, most of the time when you're writing too, I mean, almost every movie I ever did, whenever I get a I get the scene to do, it's never the same. It usually always changes. They yeah. either stuff to take stuff away like don q uh al al capone had like maybe like three or four lines in the beginning script but then when we ended it we we he actually added another scene and then he had like more lines because we improv and it's funny the scenes that were the words that were actually in the script we didn't even do them wow so when i write basically i'm writing the scene 
but I'm open to, like, you know, you're mm. in the pizzeria, two people get up and they leave. Hey, Tony, thanks for the pizza. It was great. I love coming here. Oh, thanks for coming, guys. Take care. I mean, that could always change. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, like, even when I, you know, I got the chance to work with you on, on a movie, uh, Who is Jenna? That's where, uh, well, I really got to know you and, uh, and a few others, like Gary and everything, and uh, we had a great time. But uh, on that set, I remember you kind of turned that character uh, around and you had a lot of lines that you put in there and, and you were funny. It, you, you tur- that was kind of like, you know, I've seen you in all these, like n- not so much comedy and then all that, you're really funny and playing a totally different character. So I, you know, I watched that. I'm like, that's really cool how you did that. Yeah. Thank you. I love doing comedy. Yeah. Crazy roles and dramas are great. Yeah. But comedy, like I said, I just finished this thing, Townhouse Confidential, where I played this funny, you know, this funny guy that lives in Manhattan and, and it's a great story and everything. And it was funny, I actually booked booked it to play the tough guy in it. Oh. But when I went to the party, they had like a, a, a party where everybody met in the beginning of the film and there was another character in the movie called Sal Carmine, which was a little bigger part. And I asked the director, I said, Oh, who's playing this? And he was like, oh, we're still looking for it. Oh. I was like, you know, I'd be interested in playing it if, you know, if you guys wanted me to. And the director's like, yeah, sure. You know something? You'd be great for that part. But then the writer wanted me to audition. So I auditioned. Oh. But the writer loved my audition tape. And I ended up getting the part. And I'm I'm excited. I can't wait for the world to see that movie. Townhouse Confidential. It's something something that no one's ever seen me do before. It's, it's so, I wow. love doing different things. Yeah. And you said, is that is that going to come on Amazon, you said? I don't know what that's going to come on. They just finished it, I don't know, like a month ago or a month mm-hmm. and a half ago. But the people who are producing it is uh, this lady, Roslyn, Roslyn Roslick. Roslyn, she um, is a famous writer. She wrote the book, yeah. Town Confidential, mm-hmm. and it's based on her book. Very nice lady. And um, they're, they're doing all the color correction and all the editing and everything right now. And I guess when they're finished, they're going to, you know, try to, you know, get it released. And I think it's going to get a release because the story's great. And it's really good. And they have a lot of great characters in it, too. I love how, you know, you're working now. Like, I mean, you know, it's been crazy for the past, like, a year and a half or so. And But you seem to be, you know, getting some movies and working and, and stuff. So that's good, right? That's uh, uh, Was it hard in the beginning when all this started? Um, no one was really working, right? Yeah, I mean, for a little while, we... We took off and we weren't working, but I mean, yeah. I was actually in the one of the first films that, that came back started, uh, that started uh, filming mm-hmm. in New York City, upstate. Oh. And I remember doing the first one. There was like so many protocols for you know COVID yeah. and stuff like that. You know, mask and yeah. you know you didn't have the vaccine back then, so mm. they had tested. They tested us like every day, and you know, it was it was crazy. But we got through it. Are they loosening up a little bit more now? That it's a bit a little longer with with the with the SAG rules and everything, or is it still pretty on top of everything? Well, it depends on the production. I mean, I shot something in Florida where it was the easy, mm-hmm. but most productions in New York they want you to have a, a COVID test seven hours before you go to work, mm-hmm. and you know, and you have to wear masks, of course, until you're working, and then you know everybody else is wearing, excuse me, wearing masks, and they have to have excuse me, sanitizer around and they have a special person that is um, in charge of COVID. Oh. Like it's actually a position. Like, you know, you have a director, you have an actor and now you got a COVID. The COVID person? Yeah, exactly, a COVID person. <laughs> they're, they're like a cop, they're all over the place. Get your mask up. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, they, they, you know, they, when you come in, they take your temperature mm. you know, and they ask you how you're feeling and, you know, and basically, you know, they, they monitor like where people are sitting and eating, you know, they make sure, you know, who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, you know, who sits together, who sits over here, you know, there's different rules for different people. So, oh. you know, whatever they need you to do, I just do it. It doesn't make a difference, you know? Yeah. Well, the good thing is that, that they're getting it done. Like films are getting done. Shows are getting done. So that's that's good. Yeah, it was so. On town I was confidential. No one had got COVID, but the last day we were supposed to have a rap party, mm. and then they caught, they all they sent the email out on the last day of shooting. One of the girls called in that she couldn't come to work because she had COVID. Oh, man! So they had to shut down <laughs> the last day. Oh. We finished filming, so it was good. But we didn't have the rap party. That's the only thing. And then the funny part is, after the next week that came, the girl found out 
she she it was a mistake. She really didn't have COVID. Oh, so it was like a false positive kind of thing? Or... It, oh, it was weird. They sent the email, and then they sent another email. And I was like, ah, I'm just grateful to be in the movie and that they, they, they finished it. And they didn't have to shut it down during production. You know, like a couple of other shows, they had to shut down. I yeah. mean, I, I wasn't on any, thank God. Now, you've also done TV. So um, how is TV uh, different from doing a film? Because, like, uh, are you there yet? You were on that for... Um, and... Uh, and that's a comedy too. So you did some comedy back then on television. Huh? So uh, how did that go? And how was it different from being on a film set? Is it? Is there any difference? Yeah, I mean, comedy on a TV show is basically different because, I mean, all we there yet was on a sound stage. Mm. So they had like all these like boxes of rooms where like oh. the living room, the bar, the driveway, or whatever mm. doing that week. And basically, you came down and you acted. And they had four cameras actually watching you. So basically, you didn't have to be like a certain way to get, be caught on camera. And in film, you know, when you're on location, you know, you usually have like one or two cameras and you have to stay in the frame. Yeah. You have to stay in the light. You have to watch the other actors. You know, basically sitcoms, are, it's a little easier to do. And, you know, and it's fun, too, because, you know, you come to the set. They usually have a room for you. You sit down. They call you. You know, and, and yeah. it's fun. I love that. That's one, that's one of my favorite things to do. That's one of my dreams to be on a, a show and just, you know, be on a show and just do it, man. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy being on the, the, the TV show sets, too, in, like, New York and, the, and uh, Brooklyn and all that was on those sets. Those were those were fun days. <laughs> I haven't done it a long time. <laughs> but uh, – I was. I can't wait till you know we were allowed to travel from my school and everything and trips to bring uh, students to sound stages and show them what it's really like. So that's something. But um, in the meantime, we were doing a lot of interviews with people like you, and and everyone's been giving advice and telling people, uh, you know, this is how it is in the business. So it's been great doing the show, and I'm I'm so happy that you got to be here and and be a part of it. Oh no, I'm I'm glad that you asked me to be a part of it. And um, it's good that you're teaching the students, you know, how it, how it is in the business. I mean, it's a hard business. It really yeah. is. I mean, basically, you got to, like I said, write your own movie, make your own movie, and, you know, and, and get it out there. Do a short film. Get some experience. You know, play yeah. different characters, you know. And that's how, you know, that's how you get your... I was lucky. Like I said, I started at a young age. Mm -hmm. And basically, I fell into it. I really, in the beginning, I was basically playing myself in different... In different roles, I really didn't have a technique. When I first started, it was basically like my manager would send me sides and it would be like, oh, you're playing a, a kid from Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, and my manager would just be like, just be yourself. Yeah. You know, and because like, I was a kid from Brooklyn. So basically I would go play myself. But, you know, over the years, watching different actors and watching different directors and learning, you know, I've learned technique and I learned how to do research and I learned how to, you know, it's not only always about the acting. I mean, the acting has to be there, but you also yeah. have to be technical, like staying in the frame, you know, not blocking the other actor and being giving as an actor. Like, I love, like, even on Townhouse Confidential, when I finished, the other actors were like, Joe, you're so giving as an actor. Thank you so much. And I'm like, you know, that that's what I do, man. I like to yeah. want other actors to shine, too. It's not only about me. It's about the whole project. You know, it's, it's, it's a team effort in everything you do from, you know, the PA to the hairstylist to the yeah. wardrobe to everybody, to the people giving you the food. You know, everybody's involved. If you get one person out of whack, it could ruin everything. Yeah, I noticed that even being on set with you and you're and you're doing your scenes and working with other actors that because there was a lot of them on set that were just starting out and you were helping them through the scenes and and you know you see that even behind the scenes where I was you see that and uh, I I did notice that when you were younger I guess you were getting that from all like 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 Paulie and, and Robert De Niro and um and uh, Chaz Palmitari right like they were uh, helping you out. Those guys helped me out tremendous. I'm grateful to Chaz and, and De Niro and everybody I started off with. They gave me so much great advice. And even like the thing I just did, the Don Q thing, you know, yeah. the guy Premium um, Heat and this guy uh, Nicholas Greco, and they were, you know, kind of yeah. knew a little. And, you know, after this, after we filmed, they were like, oh, thank you for making us feel so comfortable and, you know, and making it so easy. And, you know, and to myself, I mean, I don't even realize – that I'm doing it, but I just mm -hmm. come to the set and I'm just myself. I just try to be nice and kind and, you know, and get the work done. And, you know, 
and that's what I do. And then at the end of the day, everybody, you know, they love it, and I'm just happy about it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then you got, you did a lot of short films as well. And there was playing the circuit and, uh, you, but when that, you got to play so many different characters in all those shorts, like completely different. Yeah. Uh, so you've been all over the map. Is there any type of character that you never got to play that you want to play? Well, I wanted to play a drag queen. Oh. John Gallagher was supposed to film a movie called All Mobbed Up, mm. but he passed away. Rest yeah. in peace. I miss him so much. Yeah. Who knows, maybe one day, whoever has that script, maybe they'll make it. But I was looking forward to filming that. We were supposed to film it, uh, I think, in March. But what happened mm -hmm. was he passed away, so we didn't do it. I mean, but I would love to play, you know, I would just like to play a nice, a nice regular person. Like, you know, maybe a, a school teacher, yeah. a principal, you know, uh, uh, maybe an air, airline pilot. I can see that. I can see you doing those things. Yeah, like a, a guy driving a boat, you know, guy working in a candy store, <laughs> and construction worker, cops I like, detectives I like. A school teacher would be great, you know, with like glasses and stuff, and like teaching, uh, teaching the, um, teaching the students. Yeah, stuff like that. I would love to do that. Yeah, those are some good roles that you could. Yeah, you could definitely. Pull that off and do that, and, and maybe one day, really soon, maybe people see this, like, yeah, we got it, we got to get you in as a teacher. <laughs> oh, I would love that, man. My friends always tell me too; they they think I should be a teacher. I mean, I did an acting class once. I did like mm -hmm. a five five part acting seminar. Oh. I don't know, a couple of years ago, it was pretty. It was pretty good. Uh, one of my friends told me to do it, and I did it. I had like 16, mm -hmm. 16 students. It was really good, and everybody says I should be a teacher, and I'm like, maybe one day. Yeah, it seems like, well, you're trying everything. You've done everything. <laughs> what haven't you done that you want to do? Well, I mean, the teaching thing was 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 a thing my friend suggested. Mm. My friend was taking a bunch of classes, and he was like, why don't you, because he used to call me for advice. I used to help him coach him and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, why don't you do a class? He goes, you're so good. You always help me out. You know, you know a lot of things about the business. And I was like, ah, you know what? I really don't have time. And he's like, listen, I'll help, I'll help you do it. Yeah. And like, all right, let's, let's do it. So we were like, you know what, when could we do it? We're like, oh, let's do it on a Sunday. So we found a spot, put a couple of things on Facebook, and next thing you know, we did the class. And, you know, we, we ironed it out. I had like a seminar, and I had everything lined up, how we were going to do it. Yeah. And it was great. He actually called me a couple of weeks ago. He wants me to do another one. But I'm like, yeah. listen, with this COVID thing, mm. it's hard right now. I said, maybe like in a year or two, I might do one. Yeah. It's not easy teaching right now. We got to bear mask every day and... Not easy right now. <laughs> Maybe well, in the summer. Coaching. I do do coach people sometimes. Like people have an audition, they'll yeah. call me up and they'll be like, "Oh, Joe, I got an audition. Can you help me? Can you coach me?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, sure." And I coach them, and, and it's amazing sometimes. Like when I coach people, and like they do it, and then I tell them like how to do it a little different, and then they're like, they're like, "Wow!" I, I like sometimes it's hard. Like even with me, when I first started, when I would do like an audition, I would do it. But then when I watch myself, I would see what I did something wrong. So you can't oh. see what you're doing. So somebody yeah. would do it, and then I would tell them, take a pause here. Make a face here. Or, you know, when somebody's talking, react to them. Don't just wait for your line. And then they would do it, what I would tell them, and then they would do what I told them. Because what I would do is i say, you show me how you do it. I'd let them do it. And then i tell them what I would do differently. Hmm. And then when they do it differently, they're like, wow, how come I didn't think of that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I said, I'm just trying to help you out. And then, you know, and most of the time they book their roles and I'm happy when they book their roles. That's a good feeling. Yeah. When you coach them and then they, they get that role, they book it. Cause it, that's not easy either. I, I, I've been there, done that and going against tons and tons of people and you never know. Yeah. Then usually the, the grandson or the, or the cousin or somebody gets the part. I mean, yeah. I've been on shows when like, I remember I was doing a show and they were looking for a character and like so many people auditioned for this character. People actually inboxed me, oh, can you send my tape to somebody? Can you do yeah. this? And I was like, I was like, I don't know what I could do. And the part ended up going to the guy's cousin. So it didn't matter who auditioned. It was like, you weren't getting the part. So it's hard sometimes in this business. You could do that. That's why what I do is I do my best and then that's it. Yeah. I go in, I perform, I do my best. Whatever happens, happens, man. I love to perform. Mm -hmm. I don't act, I perform. Absolutely, and and you'll and you'll be performing on uh, next Saturday, on stage. Yep. Next, no, the Saturday after. 
Saturday after, yeah. So not the one coming up, the one's the 16th, the 16th. And uh, yeah, so you got that all down, you're all ready for that? Or you just, do you, do you have it all, your sets down? Or do you just go? Because I know you could just go. I have some stuff written down. And then I have some stuff I just talk, you know, I just talk to people in the audience and mm -hmm. I have comedy, you know, it, it's different. I, yeah. But most of it, most of it is pre-written like 80% mm -hmm. and then you know that's how I do it because you could you, you you're the type you could go up there and just tell stories and and, and tell funny stories of and and people get that because I, re, I remember you doing that as well you know doing your stand-up but also like getting into stories and stuff and it's really funny to listen to your stories like yeah, that you have, so. thank you and a lot of people just want to hear the stories of you know people on the set and you know this that because a lot of people ask questions and you know like but how's Robert De Niro? How's this yeah. guy? That guy? How'd you do this? How'd you get started? So, you know, I, I touch on that a little just to, you know, give people a little a little information about myself. Yeah. How was different? How was it much different from you acting in a Bronx tale in a drama and De Niro being in that and, and, and Goodfellas and in and, and, and that drama and then doing analyze that in a funny, funny sequence? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty fun. It was cool. I mean, I don't know. It, it's just funny how, I don't know. I just gravitate to whatever's on the page. Mm. And if I know it's drama, I do it differently. Like if I know it's drama, I know I got to be like locked in Tough. with a different emotion. If I know it's comedy, it's more like, you know, you know, over the top or more like funnier, you know, it's just a diff different thinking. Yeah. It's all about the thinking in my head and the preparation in my head. And, you know, and I think more comedy is more facial reactions, funny ones. Yeah. I'm a facial reactions too, but more like, you know, hard, like, mm, you know, yeah. Like he's more like, you know, laughter and stuff like that. It was fun, but it was, I enjoyed analyze that. And it was fun being, you know, hung, hung from a roof <laughs> for a couple, of, a couple of minutes. Yeah. It's a funny scene and just, uh, I do whenever I'm doing something or someone puts me in something. It's usually comedy or something like that. And I and I was uh, I'm like I gotta do a drama. <laughs> so I'm the opposite of like trying to learn from going from the comedy into like really dramatic type things. But well, it's all the thinking. It's all thinking. It's all emotion. It's all you know putting yourself in a situation. You know putting yourself with the characters like you know building up a character and you know what the character is doing how the character is feeling why is he doing it what you know every, i mean i don't just go and say words on a set yeah i, I say the words. there has to be meaning to the words why i'm saying the words why am i saying these words what you know what's going on why am i killing this guy why am i mm -hmm. you know laughing at this guy you know or, that's that's what i look at when i look at the script i just dissect it i don't just go and start reading lines off a page mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of people should understand and they, and they don't do that. I've seen that they just read, like you said, lines off the stage and you really have to dissect. Teaching kids, you, you learn that. You're like, if you dissect this script and you have to make a shot list and you have to see each scene and all these shots and know the character. So it's not easy. No, <laughs> and, all, and all the emotions too, I mean, you know, especially when you're filming a movie, you're filming it out of sequence. It's not in a row. So, you know, yeah. if you're doing a scene that's in the middle of the movie, you know, if you, took all your notes down and you wrote like, you know, a little angry, you know, funny, or, you know, or you write while you're doing, while, you know, I'm killing this guy because he did something to my sister. Like, you know, you could be thinking, oh, thinking about mm -hmm. your sister when you're killing him. You know what I mean? So if you write all this down, when it's the day to shoot the scene, you'll have it there. So you don't have to think. You'll be like, oh, wow. Okay. This is what I got to think. This is how I got to act. You know, it makes it much easier when you, when you do that. Like how about the scene with you and William DeMeo when you took that bottle and you smashed it over the guy's head and in that movie there? And I, I remember watching it and they're like, man, you are intense <laughs> sometimes. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Back yeah, in because, the day. Because he just took my car. Yeah. That, uh, the gangster, he just took my car and he was a big gangster in the neighborhood. And I really didn't want to like, hit him because I was just a, a pizzeria guy. And, you know, and I didn't like what he said about Willie's character because Willie was my best friend. Yeah. So basically I was holding back before I hit him with that. But then he really got me to the point where I was just like, Shh. and if you watch the scene, you could see, you know, you could see in my face, like, you know, I really don't want to do it. But after I do it, I'm like, you know, yeah, that, 
Thank you for the compliment too. Yeah, and and it, people should go see that. I think you could watch that. Uh, was that on Netflix originally? Back in the day, I Back think it was on day? Netflix. Yeah. Tubi, and also you got Wannabes I did with William DeMeo and Mommy. now you got Dave Zen. And, you know, the writing and back in the day was amazing. William's a great writer. And yeah. now I'm so proud that he's doing that Gravesend, man, because it's a really good show. And the, the cast he's got for this season mm. is unbelievable. Besides him starring in it and, you know, Chris DeMeo, Amar Asante, Andrew Dice Clay. I mean, now you got Gary Pastore just did something in it. Oh. Frank Fresher, Mario Cantone. I'm coming back to do a couple of more scenes. Awesome. But it's yeah. a great story. If you like the Brooklyn back in like the late 80s, early 90s, yeah. you know, like it. Well, I got to watch it. I haven't seen it yet, so I definitely got to watch that. That's for sure. And I do like the writing from that movie, so it's the same. So absolutely, got to check that out. It's got to be on my list, top of the list. So, uh, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to put the – there we go here. This is where everyone can buy the tickets for the show at uh, Middletown, uh, MiddletownC.com special events. And uh, if those of you from where uh, we live here in Middletown in the area – uh, growing up, it's the sporting events where uh, even Middletown North, where they play ice hockey. So uh, everyone in town knows this, knows that place. Um, and uh, you got to go on the 16th, right? Thank you. Absolutely. It'd be a great show. I mean, you know, if yeah. you want to and enjoy your night, come on down. It's early, too. 5.30 opening up. Yeah. Be done by like 9.30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. You could be go out to another place or... You know, go home and go to bed. I noticed that too. I'm like, yeah, it's early. I, I'm get as I get older, the earlier shows are much better. So, uh, yeah, I think it'd be a nice out, a night out for people. They really need it, and you know, you go nice and early, start eating, and then the sh uh, show starts. And you said probably every comedian can take about what 20 minutes or so. Yeah, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. They get the last guy who goes on, uh, Steve Marshall, headliner. Right? He goes on forever. I mean, I have to probably like shut him down. He, he won't stop. He last show he did like forty five minutes. He just kept going because he just goes into the crowd and starts talking with the crowd, cracks with the crowd, and he is really funny, man. You're gonna see. You'll see. You'll see. You'll, you're gonna. You're gonna love it. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to uh, thank you for joining us, and it was a great conversation. I mean, we could go forever. <laughs> we could just keep going on and on and on. And uh, but it was great to have you on, and uh, we, we covered a lot of stuff. But we definitely wanted to get the comedy in there, and I, I hope you continue to do the show. Uh, you're going to continue after this, right? And do more and more and more. You think? Or oh, yeah, we're going to do another. I mean, if the show goes good, which so far it is doing good at Middletown, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to probably do another show. You know, in a couple of months, I mean, be, but bring new new comics, yeah, new comics, and I'll host again, and then you know, and it'll be like the same thing, but just different comics. I I always yeah. get the best comics, the funniest comics, just because I want everybody to have a good time. That's awesome, absolutely. So we can't wait. You're going to be hosting the show starting at five thirty in two weeks on October sixteenth. So Joe D'Onofrio hosting the big comedy event right here in Middletown, New Jersey. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate you and. Everybody in Middletown, I love you. I love everybody in Middletown. <laughs>